Leeds United are the new club. Now, it's a little bit cheeky to go from Huddersfield to Leeds United. They are local rivals after all, but it's the first time we've been able to take over a championship club before the summer transfer window of that first season. And boy, did we have a summer transfer window. They gave me a £70 million budget in the championship. We haven't went too crazy with it. I want to bank a lot of that money for when we are in the Premier League, but we have spent £49 million this summer whilst bringing in £38 million. So a net total of £11 million is not too bad for a championship season. I would have been buzzing with an £11 million budget. So the fact that we had that much money available to spend was absolutely fantastic. We'll quickly go through the outs. Thomas Moshion went and joined Newcastle for £9 million. He was a decent enough uh, central slash defensive midfielder who I would have kept at the club, but um, you'll see one of the players I've signed. He's pretty special and we had no room for him anymore. Next one to leave was Grady um, De Angana. He's left to join P-A-O-K. He's a winger. Again, more than good enough for the championship, but with the sort of targets we had in mind, he found himself leaving the club. That was 8 million, could potentially rise to 9.75. Isaac Success, who we've got now a Sunderland save, if you want to say that. Uh, five and a half million pounds. Perugia, uh, a decent player, decent left-hand sided player, but again, hasn't really developed on this save and at 31 years old. It's good to get that much money for him as we can. Martin Ward's left to join uh, Watford. He's a youngster, 16 years old. Probably not the kind of sale I would make if we were here longer term, but a load of clubs kept coming in for him. He's got four-star potential. I decided just to cash in and get the money now. Bursan Selena left and joined Perugia for £2.8 million. A left-sided player who was never going to make it into our first-team squad, so he's left at 30 years old. Again, you'll probably say the, the, the trend here, apart from the really young players like Bradley Walker here, leaving for £2.5 million going to Brentford. A lot of the sales have been players either in the late 20s or early 30s. Eric Daniel left to join Luton for £2.2 .2 million. He's a decent fullback. He looks more like a um, defensive midfielder to me. But, again, no space for him in the squad. So he's left. Owen Lee's left to join Everton as well for a fee that could rise to £4.3 It He doesn't even look that good current ability-wise. Maybe he's got the potential there. But, again, we won't be here long enough to go through that. And a lot of other sales here. Anyone of major note, Andre Green, I guess, left to join Nottingham Forest for 825 k Another winger who we had no room in the squad for. And again, a couple hundred Ks here and there certainly quickly adds up to the £38 million total that we ended up bringing in during this summer transfer window, which brings us to the ins. And I wanted to quickly talk about two players because I had nothing to do with their signings that were already agreed, one of which was absolutely massive. And I know this boy, Hugh Griffiths, uh, a goalkeeper from Borussia Dortmund. We were looking at him when we got promoted with Huddersfield and he's joined Leeds on a free. Look at him. 24 years old, Australian, still got a bit of potential. He will be our goalkeeper in the Premier League. I have absolutely no doubt about that. He is a fantastic, fantastic signing. And I was so happy <laughs> when I seen that they were getting him on a free transfer. It's absolutely fantastic deal. Next one to come in was Afonso Namora from Sporting B. Again, I had nothing to do with this signing. Very good mentally. Technically not so great, physically a little bit lacking as well. He does have a little bit of room to grow, but he won't be a starter in our squad. Left back, he's just going to be a squad player. And that takes us to the signings that we actually did make. The first of which was Inigo Gonzalez from Spurs. He's going to be a backup defensive midfielder. Um, Three-star current, four-star potential is not too bad. 20 years old. He's not the sort of deep line player maker I would want, but I wasn't looking for anything special. I was just looking for somebody who would be happy to sit on the bench or in the squad and not get too much game time. The next one to come in was Walter Bengua from our old side Barnsley for a loan. Uh, £51,000 a month we are paying. Centre half, fourth choice, third choice, maybe. Um, he's a decent player. He's someone who could easily make it at the championship. Leading player potential. Um, decent player current. Not too bad. Uh, again, we just needed more players in to bolster the squad. And as you can see, I haven't abused the loan market like I would have previously because we had money. Now, this boy is probably the best signing of the summer and he's the cheapest, the one that we paid for. £1.9 million, Kevin Mejia, Costa Rican central midfielder, absolute dynamo. He's going to be playing in that box-to-box -box midfielder role for us. 
in the centre of midfield. He's a workhorse. His physicals are to dream of. His mentals are so well-rounded, it's unbelievable. And at 19 years old, with plenty of potential still to grow, he's currently rated as a four-star player, which means he is operating at a Premier Division level. And he's playing for us in the Championship. If we don't win this league, <laughs> I'm going to be gutted. Next up was Richard Granger, who was signed from uh, Juventus for £7 million. Pounds. He's an attacking midfielder who's going to be playing in the shadow striker role for us. As you can see, he's very, very well matched for that. He's 18 years old, left footer, three and a half star current, five star potential. You can see the theme with these boys. These sort of boys that were, who I would be signing in the Premier League is signing for us in the Championship. And I'm hoping with the year development with Leeds, leading us into the Premier League and then sticking it in the squad, we might have a bit of a better look if we're not making wholesale changes during the summer transfer window, if we are to get promoted. Next up was Kazim Itim, £10 million from QPR, right midfielder, probably one of our weakest signings, which is, a, looking at his stats, you're a bit surprised. Um, right midfielder is not a position where the regens have really started to mature yet. We don't have a great deal of options, so £10 million from a championship rival seemed like a good bit of business, and he will be our starting right midfielder for the year. And then we've signed two English wonder kids. We've actually been able to sign English players for once because we're not in bargain basement. Jim Walker from Liverpool. He's naturally a striker. He's going to be playing on the left-hand side for us. We'll be training him in the inside forward role for the rest of the season. Hoping that come next season, he will have fully developed in that position. It'll be a natural. And of course, his attributes will develop alongside that 20 years old English, as I said, wonder kid from Liverpool. It was 14 and half million pounds we ended up spending on him and I'm more than delighted to bring him in which takes us to our final signing Ian Chapman from Everton 15.25 million pounds he will be our striker supremo uh, 20 years old again another English lad mentals are just oh, spot on I love the work rate I love the teamwork he's not going to be playing as a pressing forward for me he is going to be playing as a, an, an advanced forward but he's got the physicals for it his technicals could use some work. 13's where it counts though. Um, so with a season in the championship, hopefully he will develop quite nicely. So Leeds are the club that I think we're going to have the best opportunity to beat Birmingham with. They've got the finances, they've got the infrastructure and we are more than likely to get promoted this season. I fully, fully believe that. As you can see, they've got plenty in the club culture they want us to use though. Not signing players over 30. We don't do that anyway. Under 23, signing under 20s as well for the first team in the future. That's absolutely fine. Attack and football, we do that. Entertain and football, <laughs> I hope. Um, develop, play and use, develop players using the club's youth system is something we naturally do anyway. If somebody's good enough, uh, or too young, or good enough, whatever, they're straight in the first team. Um, the five-year plan, signing players to develop for profit. Uh, naturally, of course. All of these are just things I do automatically anyway. The best thing about it is with Leeds, even if we are to have a terrible season and not get promoted, they were only expecting a top half finish. Um, they finished seventh in the championship last season, so uh, you can understand why they're not too ambitious. But after giving us a 70, <laughs> where do we say it? It's in finance screen. Original budget of 72.2 million. We've still got 47 million pounds left to spend if we need to spend it in January, or we can just bank it for next season. It, they've got an overall balance of 20 million <laughs> so i don't know where this money's coming from but um we'll uh we'll we'll ride it out and we'll see what our finances look like over the course of a season we have already played a couple of games in the season so we'll quickly review those fixtures i just wanted to show you the season preview as to see where we are expected by the media we're currently sitting seventh um west brom everton and fulham were the relegated sides from last season so we've got a lot of work to do um, and I think we could do it with the quality of our first team squad. It's it's unbelievable. It's unrivaled in the championship, I think, uh, compared to what we've had previously. And we've always had successes in the past. And this will be our formation. Um, very, very similar to the uh, Huddersfield one. But it's slightly different in the terms of wanting to retain possession a lot more. Um, well, basically, we know we're one of the best sides in this league. We don't need to play the fast-paced, counter-attacking style of football. We are looking to take control of the game and get our goals that way. We'll quickly see what Birmingham have done, Barnsley and Huddersfield. I know Birmingham have made an absolute massive... Oh no, it's not Birmingham, it's somebody else. Um, any major sales, Kaichi Goto has left to join Slavia Prague for 11 million. 
That is an absolute bargain, Slavia Prague. I hope you enjoy him. He's had a terrible time of it after we left Birmingham City. But um, good luck to you. Mazimiru was the major signer, though. 21.5 million. A former Birmingham man when we had him on loan, of course. He has now joined them on a permanent deal. Barnsley have sold Alan Franco to Birmingham, so our former clubs combining here. £11.5 million for a 30-year-old centre-back. He's a very, very good centre-back, though, so that's not too bad of a signing for Birmingham. Um, I hope Barnsley have got the men to back them up. And this was the major signing for Barnsley. Julius Dehan from Liverpool for £70 million a centre-back. Um, £70 million worth? Probably not. And, of course, that takes us to Huddersfield, who will be playing Champions League football this season. Only one signing and one sale. They sold Gunnarsson, who was transfer listed away even when I left, and Ali as well as went to Brighton. But Angel Gomes has joined from Frankfurt for £25 million. Um, He's English. Uh, £35 million, sorry. He's English, so I guess there's that, and he's a decent enough player. Are the media predicting any relegation from our former sides? No, Huddersfield 10th, Birmingham in 8th, and Barnsley. Where are you, Barnsley? In 11th. So they're all predicted pretty much mid-table. But anyway, let's ignore our former clubs and look at the games that you've missed since the start of the season. Xavier Membayumba is one of our centre-backs and he scored the only goal in a 1-0 home win against Derby. And then we will face Charlton Athletic away from home. Kazim Itim and an own goal gets a comfortable 2-0 win in the end. So we currently sit in third. Uh, Everton and Leicester and Crystal Palace both winning all of their games as well. Uh, which takes us to today, which is against Swansea City at home. Currently in 16th. Let's see how we get on. I'll quickly run you run you through our start in 11 today. Hugh Griffiths, we've seen, he's going to start at in goal, of course. Matty Cash was a right back already at the club. He is going to probably be our starting right back, 30 years old. Not the best, but he should do for this level. Sebastian Caceres was already at the club as well. He got a lot of interest over the summer, and I was half tempted to sell him um, at 27 years old, but he is club captain, so I decided to keep him around. Uh, ben Gewer, of course, the new signing starting at centre back. And Drecker starting at left back, a player who was already at the club, a very attacking left back, which I, I like to see. Ben Pearson, again, one of the, I think, it, is he captain or is Caceres? One of them's captain. It might be Ben Pearson. I've decided to keep him around because a bit of age, a bit of experience, um, and there was no real wonder kids to sign in that position. Kevin Majai, we've seen, a term we've seen, a beer is a, will start in attack midfield as our new signing from Juventus is currently injured. Um, Jim Walker on the left, Ian Chapman up front. Let's get into the game. I'm excited. So they come at us with a flat 4-4-2. Haven't started the season the best. Currently sitting 16th in the league. Let's make it worse for them. A pretty slow first 20 minutes or so, but we do end up getting our first highlight. It's going to be a corner. Ian Chapman is the man who is going to take it. It falls to Pearson in the box. And Ben Pearson gets his first goal of the season to put us 1-0 up. 22 minutes in. It's not too often we see set piece goals from corners, so we'll enjoy it whilst we can. Chapman is the man who plays it in then. Bit sloppy defending by the uh, Swansea defence if they just let that run. It was under no pressure whatsoever either, so disappointing for them, but not disappointing for us. Chapman with a free kick. Oh, what a goal, my son. Two set pieces. Ian Chapman being heavily involved in both. He gets his first goal of the season. That's him off the mark. The monkey off his back. And I hope this is the start of something beautiful with our new English striker. Right, so 2-0 up and absolutely cruising. Swansea is still playing at a defensive formation, so that's absolutely fine by me. We're not going to hopefully see too many struggles from us defensively unless they change things, so we'll have to keep an eye. Eze with a corner for us. It's played in and cleared by Boyer. But Pearson is going to be the first man to the ball and restart the attack. Caceres switches the ball to Walker on this left-hand side and Drecker is overlapping. Is he going to whip it in? He does whip it in. Back post. It's cleared again though, but Etim this time is the first man to the ball. Gets past his man. He whips the ball in. Walker's there. Heads it down to Ezia. To Majaya. Somebody shoot. Etim is the man who shoots and Etim gets his goal. His second goal of the season. I put us 3-0 up before half-time. Absolutely dominating Swansea. They really, really need to change something if they want to try and get back into this game. But it was well-worked goal by us. I did think we were going to waste the opportunity there, but Cash lays it off to Etim. Great first-time strike. And hopefully, that's a sign of things to come from this young lad. And there we have it, half-time. Leeds United 3, Swansea 0. No point looking at the other scores yet. The, the league hasn't really formed yet. You don't know who's going to be good, who's going to be bad, and which scores you have to keep an eye out for. As Swansea City go very close. 
first minute of the second half. Grimes receives the ball again, whips it in, and it goes out of play. We were fortunate there, not to concede. They've went to a more counter-attack and style. We're going to stick to positive. We'll stick with positive. I don't think we'll, they'll be able to catch us too regularly. Um, now they've went back to defensive. So, obviously, the manager not liking what he's saying. But Swansea, again, have themselves another attack and opportunity coming down this right-hand side. The ball switched to the left. Suarez picks it up. Out to Jones. Out to Gavardiol. Um, I'm not liking this. Jones whips it in. Suarez is there. Good block. It's back in, though. Good save by Hugh Griffiths. Getting involved. Jones there again. Griffiths is a man at a mountain. We are going to go to balance now. I don't like what we are seeing right now in the second half. And with about 25 minutes or so to go, we will look to make some changes. Jim Walker on the left-hand side. We've got plenty of options to be able to play there. I think, I think I'm going to play Liam Delap. Liam Delap's probably a good enough striker for this league who can play on the left-hand side. So I'm going to try and keep him happy and give him as much game time. Ben Pearson hasn't got the legs to survive too long, so we'll bring on Inigo Gonzalez for him. And Endreka will have to steer on. We'll keep our final sub just in case it's required. And with 10 minutes to go, we will make that final substitution. Um, Ezia hasn't had the greatest game playing in behind the striker. We'll bring on Halil in that attack and midfielder role. Obviously, we've got that young French lad from Juventus who will be playing there going forward, and um, Ezia will be the backup player, but... At least for now, got to deal with Ezia as a starter. And there's the fact, there's the half just ticking away. Second half was completely dead, but thankfully we had done more than enough in the first half to get ourselves the win. So that win sees us steer top of the table. Leicester and Crystal Palace, the only other sides who have won all three games, Everton dropping points against Preston in that one. Great start. What do you think of me summer transfer signings then? Are you happy? Do you think I've done a good enough to be able to get us promoted? I think we've got more than enough to get us promoted, honestly. I want to win the league now. Um, Leicester, Everton and West Brom will be difficult. Uh, but I don't see any reason why we can't win the league. Like we did with Huddersfield, like we did with Barnsley. Um, I think the championship title is going to be ours. And it's weird having a full season of the championship in the very first season in charge of the new club. We're usually around here by the time we take over, but... Thankfully, we've got in early and we've been able to put our marker down quite quickly. So looking forward to the next episode then. I do fancy that Leicester game. Um, maybe a bit further on. Brentford Stoke. Stoke are always a side who are challenging us in the playoffs usually. So we'll come back for that game. Brentford at home, Stoke away. And I'll see you there. If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.